All right, guys, my name is Esteban, one of the PGY1s. My small talk today is gonna to be over knee arthrocentesis. And specifically, I chose this because once on shift, uh, I was a patient that wasn't mine. Uh, the person that was doing the arthrocentesis decided to do a middle of the knee approach medial. And ortho was just happened to be there, walked by and they're like, why don't you do the superior lateral approach? And in my head, I was like, is there a better way of doing this? Is there one way we should be doing all of these things? I don't know. So that's why I did this. Learning points here are gonna be understanding the relevant anatomy of the knee, uh, utilizing correct positioning to maximize your success, becoming familiar with the needle approach uh, or needle direction for every approach. And generally, so you can have an understanding of what you're gonna be doing every time. Structure-wise, so indications first, then contraindications, the relevant knee anatomy, the approaches you can pick from, the materials that you're generally gonna use, techniques, troubleshooting ideas, and then general complications. So first things first, indications. There's really only two, uh, therapeutic versus diagnostic. For the most part, we're gonna be doing di diagnostic in the ED, you know, trying to roll out septic arthritis, say like on the right side. Left side, therapeutic for like removal of fluid buildup. So with fractures and hemarthrosis, uh, ortho tends to do that. Or if you're like family practice and you're doing steroid injections. Are there any absolute contraindications to this procedure? And this is a question for anyone to answer. Hmm? That's, that's fair. For the most part though, for the most part, nah. All right. And I did a Christmas theme because we're, we're, in, the, we're in the holiday time now. All right, it, when you're subsecting septic arthritis, all right, this is a medically necessary procedure. There are no absolute contraindications outside of an open fracture. <laughs> Um, there are some relative contraindications though. Um, again, these aren't gonna stop you, but you wanna like think these through. So first ones are gonna be your cellulitis. If you suspect there's cellulitis over the area that you wanna do the injection, try to avoid it. But again, that won't really stop you. The concern here is that you'd be introducing bacteria into the joint. And we'll talk about this a little bit later. Uh, so patients on like DOAX or warfarin or that have bleeding disorders, there's actually literature supporting that if you do the arthrocentesis, they're not at any, any increased risk of post-procedural bleeding. So that shouldn't really stop you either. Uh, joint prosthesis is kind of an important one here. Because the anatomy has changed, you might actually want to get ortho on board to do this one. But if you are the only person there, if you don't have ortho at your hospital and you really need to roll this out, you're just going to go ahead and have to do it. Uh, fractures and adjacent osteomyelitis are other things to think about, but again, none of these are really going to stop you if you're suspecting septic arthritis. So this is the knee. Behold, it's beautiful. Uh, relevant anatomy here, though, we're just going to boil down to the patella, pretty much, and then the femoral intercondylar notch. So patella, pretty simple. You're going to palpate around it uh, on the knee of the patient until you find the area of the biggest effusion. And then in your head, you're gonna be visualizing where this femoral interconjular notch is. Cause this is gonna be the direction you're gonna point your needle on every single approach to generally find the area where the effusion is gonna be. Um, so this tends to be right behind the patella. Uh, so if you find the patella, you know, just visualizing your head behind it, that's where you're gonna point the needle. Don't tell Dr. Silverberg this, but you can use ultrasound to help yourself out <laughs> if you're having difficulty. Um, you can use this in two ways. You can use this to find like the best spot to actually do the insertion and mark it off and then go ahead and do your approach. Or you can actually do a super patellar approach because the, that tends to be the flattest area where you can go most perpendicular with the ultrasound and then use your relevant anatomy here. So you'd be going under the uh, quads tendon, going under that into that area of effusion as you can see there and uh, do the injection that way. So you palpated the patella, you found a nice area of effusion. Now we'll talk about positioning. So you got three options here. You can do the knee fully extended. You can do the knee flex 15 to 20 degrees with the towel rolled under it. With the thought process being that if you do this, you'll relax the quad uh, and quad tendon specifically. 
so that the patella is more able to be moved. Uh, and then there's the 90 degree flexion and sitting up. This is generally the way that uh, people do when you're doing injections for like uh, steroids. Uh, limitations with this is that the patient has to be able to bend their knee. And if they have septic arthritis, they might not want to do that. So just uh, keep that in mind. So your approaches. So after looking this up, there's only been like one retrospective study that I saw saying that, you know, maybe the superior lateral approach is better for smaller joint effusions. But generally what I've understood is that the place that you can find the biggest effusion should be where you do your approach. So generally there's three options here, uh, superior, medial, or inferior. And then whether you're going medial or lateral to the patella doesn't necessarily matter a bunch. It's more of wherever the effusion is, that's where you're gonna to wanna to go. So if you're picking the middle approach, it's gonna be one centimeter lateral or medial to the patella. And here, uh, as with any of the approaches here, you're gonna direct the needle posterior to the patella, obviously, but trying to stay as horizontal as possible because the more vertical you get, the more chance you can hit of say the cartilage, making it more painful for the patient. Uh, superior approach, again, one centimeter superior, either one centimeter lateral or medial, same thing, posterior to the patella, directing towards that femoral interconjugal notch. And then the infrapatellar approach, usually used uh, with the knee 90 degrees. But with this one, you wanna be a little bit careful because the patellar tendon is there. Uh, if you hit that, very painful for the patient, pretty poor form. Uh, otherwise, staying as horizontal as possible kind of keeps you away from uh, some of the painful things that the patient can feel. Materials here, so you got your cleansing uh, things, you got your betadine, your chlorhexidine. You have your sterile materials, so your sterile gloves, your gauze, your sterile cloths, and a marker. Your syringe, generally for this, is gonna be 30 cc's to 60 cc's uh, with a 18 gauge needle. Unless it's a very, very small knee, then you might wanna go 20 or 22. Then you got your skin anesthetic. There's no one anesthetic to use here, but generally it's 1% lidocaine. Uh, with the 25 gauge needle for that. And then you're collecting tubes. So at county, I would suggest printing out the labels first to see which one it's gonna ask you to do. Some of it might be gold top, some of it you might be able to put in a specimen cup. For the most part, uh, you can use any specimen cup. If you really need to, you, and like you're in a pinch, you can also use a urine cup. Really nothing special here. And general steps here. So just to simplify this, you're gonna put on your sterile gloves. You're gonna do the beta dine. And uh, the key here is to do the entire knee just in case your first approach doesn't work and you have to do uh, another approach. Uh, then apply your sterile cloths around the knee. You wanna anesthetize with your uh, lidocaine and your 25 gauge needle. Insert along the path as well, but try not to insert the, the lidocaine actually into the knee joint as this can affect the analysis later. So needle insertion, you've decided which position you wanna do. You're gonna go ahead and insert the needle, retract the plunger, and if things are going well, you're gonna obtain your fluid. And then you're gonna do your uh, fluid collection. So if you didn't get that much fluid out and you're wondering, okay, where should I allocate all of all this fluid? The gram stain and culture needs to have a significant amount of fluid, but the cell count only needs like one milliliter, one cc, it's not a lot. And a crystal analysis, when I looked this up, they said you can get away with even like one drop of this. So you don't need to put that much towards that. Uh, for the most part, you're just gonna get your cell counts, your crystal analysis and your gram stain and culture. And then afterwards, you're gonna bandage it up and you're done with the procedure. So here, I got an example of the superior lateral approach uh, with the knee pretty much completely straight. They're making the wheel here. I want to point out that this is for a knee fracture. And so they're trying to just take out uh, hemarthrosis a little bit. And you can see right here, uh, this physician is pushing the patella actually away so that they're giving themselves more space in which to insert the needle. And then now you see they're pretty horizontal, not really getting anything. So they're changing the position. Again, they're trying to get out blood in this situation. Doing different... Uh, different directions, trying to get out as much as possible. They could use ultrasound. Silverberg would be really mad about that. <laughs> and then right here, you're gonna see the physician's uh, 
doing what's called milking the other side of the, of the knee to try to push the effusion more towards where the needle is. And so we'll get to troubleshooting ideas. So say you're inside the cavity and you're not getting anything back. So things you can do here, you can try to slowly back up the needle as you're retracting or even push it a little bit forward as you were seeing that they were doing. You can try to milk the other side of the knee, try to push that effusion more towards where you're actually trying to aspirate. Sometimes you can even uh, rotate the bevel. Maybe the bevel was caught, say, in some tissue and just need to rotate a little bit, and that can actually uh, get you to start aspirating better. Uh, other important things to note, so say you hit bone, uh, you know, obviously you got to look at what you're doing, but if you're very horizontal, you likely hit the patella, so then you want to go more vertical. Say you're pretty vertical and you hit bone, probably hit the femur. All right, so you wanna go more horizontal. Um, these are general steps, but if you're really not getting anything on your approach, then you wanna consider just doing a different site. Um, generally, that's how you're gonna get away or you know, stay away from dry taps. And then complications. So there's generally two big ones here, your hemarthrosis and your infection. Hemarthrosis usually happens within hours of the procedure, so it's not gonna be immediate. Uh, characterized by pain, stiffness, swelling, maybe not that big, that's kind of <laughs> dramatic, but the majority of these are actually self-limiting and they will resolve on their own within weeks. So there's not necessarily anything you need to do about it. If you are concerned, you can get orthopedics on board and if they have coagulopathy or a bleeding disorder, you can consider getting hematology as well. Uh, and then inf infection here. So if you feel like you went through cellulitis, and again, to differentiate cellulitis from septic arthritis is a little difficult. You kind of just gonna have to go off the exam of whether they can actually bend their knee, whether they can actually gate. Uh, there's not a lot of data supporting the use of prophylactic antibiotics. Uh, say if you went through a cellulitic area into the joint, like in your head, it kind of makes sense. Like I went through a place of infection and introduced it into a joint but not a lot of data actually says that it actually causes septic arthritis. So you can consider prophylactic antibiotics, but again, not really any data su to support that. And then lastly, major keys here are gonna be your key landmarks, essentially your patella and your femoral, femoral interconjular notch, which you're just visualizing in your head. Positioning straight leg versus towel under the knee versus 90 degrees, whichever one gets you the, whichever one you're most comfortable with and gets you the biggest area of effusion. And then your needle direction is always gonna be posterior and as horizontal as possible to the patella and towards that interconjular notch. These are my sources. It's been a tough few weeks for the Cowboys, but you know, we're still holding out hope. Any questions? I didn't see anything on that particularly. I wasn't necessarily uh, going towards the you know injection side of this, given that we don't necessarily do it that often in the emergency department. It's more like an outpatient type thing. Yeah, that, yeah, Excellent point. Uh, that was great. But the other thing is, I, I, I would prefer an orthopod to do it because every joint can only be inspected, uh, injected with steroids a certain amount of time, mm -hmm. right? So if you're doing it in this ER and somebody goes somewhere else and you're doing it, you really want to know how many times that joint was injected. If, if I can just add a couple of uh, points because I've done so many knees in my life. Um, you know, when I go in, I like to aspirate back. You know, that your, your video showed that he went all the way in and then he aspirated. I go in as soon as I hit something and I'm getting the turn on it. And I like to use as big a syringe as I can. And I do do them for uh, hemarthrosis. The person feels so much better. Um, once you, in, uh, you know, retract and don't move your position because I like to think of it almost like a figure of eight. You go a little bit too far and it's going to stop. You come out a little bit, it's going to stop. So I go very horizontal. I use my thumb on the patella, and, and if I need to, I'll just push the needle down with my thumb, but I like to go horizontally. And um, I've even changed 
uh, syringes to try to get out more fluid. And then I couldn't get it after that, even though I didn't change them. I didn't move the needle at all. So I like to think of it as almost like a figure of eight in there. That once you hit something, and if you aspirate on the way in, that's where you should stay and that's where you should stop. Yeah, those are good comments. What, what size uh, syringe do you use? I feel like my thumb gets tired from sick feet. Do you usually? I, I, I would use, I, even if you have a big hemarthrosis and you take off 30 cc's, you're going to make them so happy. Because the capsule is very taut, right? And, and unless they bleed more into it, the capsule is very taut. So it's very painful. It's very well innovated, the capsule of any drug. So I use 30 cc's. I get better control over that. I just feel more pain. Okay. Oh, great. Oh.